Well, just a broader overview of Africa. Africa is recording the highest economic growth, yet poverty levels remain very high. In Kenya, 75% of youths are unemployed and over 60% are out of school. So on a scale of 1 to 10, where 10 is fully uneven, we stand at 8.2. That is shocking. Young people are young and energetic, and they comprise a huge size of Africa's population. So on a more serious note, this can be a threat or a dividend. We have new overlooking threats in Kenya or in Africa also uh, because of the new discoveries of natural resources, for example. Oil, gold, titanium, copper, rare metals, all these things. And interesting enough is that some of these uh, natural resources are found in you know, areas where, uh, which are very prone to conflict. It is one of the drivers of, um, you know, violence and by extension extremism when ideology complements grievances. I like to argue that the failure of governance and the weak socioeconomic development leading to other factors which manifest and interplay in different ways create an enabling environment in Nigeria's vulnerability to violent extremism and its expansion. And um, this can be broken down into four broad categories. Uh, the first one is uh, political. Uh, the social aspect, the economic, and I'd also act, like to add the environmental. So a combination of poverty, poor infrastructure, weak governance um, sets a stage for hostilities that lead to, in some cases, the increase um, of violent conflict. The first president of Cameroon was a, a, a Pula, and he really facilitated somehow the access of Muslims to I would say economical, political resources of the state. The, the, indicate, the indicator of this is that when he, he left power in 1982, many Muslims decided to leave Islam and go back to the, sub, for their other things. So re Islam has been in Cameroon also a mechanism to access to power. 